Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> today I'd like to talk to you about L'Hopital's rule. And uh, I want to start with uh, the following example problem here. Uh, I'd like us to be able to evaluate the limit as x goes to 2 of x to the 7th minus 128 divided by x cubed minus 8. So you can see the limit right here. Um, and if we want to take that limit, what are fir the first few things that we'd like to try? And I think that the first thing that we typically would want to try with something like this is we'd want to try to plug in the value 2. So if we took 2 and plugged it in for x here, you'd see that on the top of this fraction, I plug in 2 and I get 2 to the 7th, which just happens to be 128. So I get 128 minus 128 divided by, if I plug in 2 to the bottom, I get 8 minus 8. And so we end up with something like 0 over 0. And we know that that's not so good, right? Uh, this is bad. We don't get 0 over 0 as a limit. So uh, <coughs> plugging in the value 2 isn't going to get the job done. Uh, and so what's our second line of defense typically when taking limits? And that is, well, can we factor this? Well, I could factor the bottom of this fraction. It's the difference of two cubes. And so I could factor it a little bit, but what about the top? The top is x to the 7th minus 128, which is the difference of things to the 7th power. And I don't know how to factor that. So we're in a little bit of trouble. And in a situation like this, I have no way to cancel the bad spot, which is kind of an x minus 2 on the bottom once factored. And so I need to do something else. And so today we're going to learn how to do this. And the way we do this is through something that we call L'Hopital's Rule. So let me talk to you a little bit about L'Hopital's Rule and how it works and then we will do some example problems to get uh, in a little deeper. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this real quick um, and we will get started. So let me write down here for you a theorem uh, and this is called L'Hopital's Rule. And uh, some people pronounce this uh, La Hospital's Rule just because that's kind of what it phonetically looks like, but uh, the the correct pronunciation of the word would be L'Hopital. Uh, so <clears throat> let's talk about this rule. And so I'm going to start by writing it down. So uh, it says let f and g be differentiable functions. Uh, with the derivative of g of x not equal to 0 on an open interval containing c, okay, except uh, possibly Uh, at C itself. Okay. Um, and then suppose that the limit as X goes to C of F of X divided by G of X produces an indeterminate form zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity and that uh, the limit as x goes to c of f prime of x 
divided by g prime of x is equal to a value L. Then we get that the limit as x goes to c of f of x divided by g of x equals L. Okay, and this is what we call L'Hopital's rule. So let's go through it one more time uh, and just talk through what this actually means for us. So we have f and g, and they are differentiable functions, so we can take the derivative of f and g, and we know that we have to have g of x not be equal to 0, okay, on an open interval containing c, uh, except possibly at c, okay? It's okay for the derivative to be 0 at c, just not around c. And then we also um, have the fact that right here, it says that the limit as x goes to c of f of x over g of x produces an indeterminate form. And what we mean by that is it either when we plug in the value c, it doesn't work, but it gives us 0 over 0, or it gives us infinity over infinity, one of those. Okay, so if we get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, and when we take the limit as x goes to c of f prime of x over g prime of x, then we get L. Okay, if that happens, then it just so happens that the limit as x goes to c of f of x over g of x is also equal to L. So if we can find the limit of the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom, then we can find the limit of the original. And that's what we call L'Hopital's rule. And it's pretty powerful. And let me show you uh, how we use something like this. So <clears throat> let's go back to our original example that I started with. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to evaluate this limit. I wanted to take the limit uh, as x goes to 2 of x to the 7th minus 128 divided by x cubed minus 8. Okay. Now, uh, remember, when I plug in 2, I get, and I use these little squiggly lines for my equal sign, just to remind myself, it isn't really equal to this, but uh, this is its form if I plugged in the 2. Okay, so if I plug in the 2 here, then I get, we said, 0 divided by 0. So this does have an indeterminate form if I plug in the 2. So what do I do in that case? Um, I use L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule tells me that this limit is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to 2 of the derivative of what's on top divided by the derivative of what's on the bottom. So what is the derivative of what's on the top here? Well, the derivative of the top is 7x to the 6th. And the derivative of what's on the bottom is 3x squared. All right, now I can do some cancellation here. Uh, I, the x squared and the x to the 6th cancel and give me an x to the 4th on top. And now if I plug in 2, I get 7 thirds times 2 to the 4th which is equal to what? Well, what's 2 to the 4th? Let's see, that would be uh, 16. So we get 7 thirds times 16. Or if you prefer, what would that be? So 70 plus 42 would be 112 over 3. Okay, and so we find the limit. So this is pretty powerful, this L'Hopital's rule. Uh, in that it allows us to take limits of things that we could never take before because for one reason or another maybe we couldn't factor. Uh, but remember, L'Hopital's on rule only works if you get this indeterminate form 0 over 0 or alternatively you get an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So if you get one of those things, then... Uh, 
uh, you can use the L'Hopital's rule. But if you don't get zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then you're kind of stuck and you need to use something else. So only if you get these indeterminate forms can you use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so now let's look at some more example problems and kind of see how this plays out.